All right, just quickly before we discuss the second part, the transition was done by just fading. So the reason I started fading here is just to make sure that I kill everything before we get here. Just like, just to make sure, but it doesn't really have that much of an effect. Great. Another thing that I want to talk about is this uh, very important posterized time that I've done here. So I went with a posterized time of 12, so which gives me that very imperfect animation, but it makes it stylized. So it's just a very cheap trick that we use to make things look better. There's another adjustment layer, which I turned off because it's very heavy, and that is I sharpen the entire animation and I give a quick chromatic aberration to the sides and I added a grain. But just for the sake of working fast on this tutorial, I turned it off. Another thing that I use when I feel like the grain is a little bit heavy is I use this footages of grain that I got online from a pack. It's way better and it's kind of faster to work with than having to add an effect on top of everything. All right. Cool. This is scene two. So basically, this is where we go into the underwater galaxy of projects that these community have been building so far. And then we go into this teapot, which symbolizes the process of creating new tokens, generating basically income for the entire DAO. Then we see people fighting inside the teapot. And then whales, which are people with a lot of and tons of money, comes in and take over everything. But then amidst this whole chaos, the professor or that blogger came in and ended this entire thing. So there's a lot to discuss. But first, let's discuss this little cat right there. It's a very complicated scene, to say the least. So we're gonna go and just focus on cat. So this is the cat. So what's going on here? So we can see that it's very stylized. It's very dense. And it's the density that gives it this very special look rather than all the other usual particular particular results that you see online. It's the density of this. That's why it takes a lot of time to render. Cool. So as you can see here, it's much more beautiful than... As you can see here, that's a lot of part. That's literally like nearly the maximum of all the particles that can be generated by particular and all it's using it's using a layer to actually emit everything and this is basically what I created is just this cat here it's just a cat and the only thing that I do is animate the eyes I do have this as an animation done by the particles okay that is one perfect let's all right so let's go into one of these bubbles which is this one okay so what do we have here we do have a bubble okay so there is nothing we do have a bubble and then for each bubble as you can see here we have the shape layer that i created but is following the bubble so whatever the bubble goes as you can see here the shape layer will follow it so the shape layer has an effect of magnify magnify is basically like the zoom effect all right that's great and then we have a turbulent displace inside that shape layer if we go for example example, put this one here, then put this one here. So as you can see here, that's what's going on. Again, let's just look at one by one. So this is the normal picture. This is the zoomed out version. So without it, that's how it looks. So we zoom it up. We add a little bit of turbulence. We blur it a little bit and we change the color because it's inside a bubble. Okay. And then we have the outer bubble, which actually have the products. Let's look at this one, for example. What we have is just a bubble. And then we add this extra layer of texture of the bubble, as you can see here. And then we have these things. Basically, what happens is we have a little bit of turbulent displays that plays, as you can see here, it's moving a little bit and in the same time as you can, because it's moving with the turbulence. So it's not moving out of position, but it's moving out of turbulence. I believe this one has a rotation. So as you can see here, like the bubble is actually rotating, just like you would do underwater. So that's what we have. That is the bubble. And every single time that the bubble passes by the camera, we will have a little bit of a wiggler so as you can see here the camera is rotated to a wiggler so the wiggler does this so these are the wiggle things that happen to the camera and so these are generated by this wiggler so the only thing that you do so again let me just show you if you didn't know about this little window I'll just put a position here and then I want to say after 20 frames it's gonna stop wiggling so the only thing that I need to do is I need to select the two keyframes so that this will become available so the only important ones are this noise type and 
if you want them all together or you only want it on X or you only want it on Y or you want it all together or you want it all to be, you know, all of them affected, but not the same way. So which is all independently, great. Smooth means it's going to be smoothed. The keyframe will be smoothed. Jagged, it's going to be like very rough. Okay, frequency is how many times per second, which is here five times and how much one pixel? No, let's just say 15 pixel just so that we can show. All right. So now we generated the keyframes as you can see, that's it. If I feel like it's not a lot, I'm just going to do like 20 per second. So now you'll have a lot more. So when the camera passes by, boom. So that's the wiggler thingy. And uh, every time it passes by, something happened. There was one of the bubbles, I think is this one. Cool, this thing here. So basically what's happening here, it's we have this little frog, as you can see, it's animated. <laughs> it's actually animated, but you don't really see it because again, because it goes fast and there's a lot happening. It's just a little bit of a thing that I just added at the very end. All right. And then we have these things. This is something that Martin really wanted to do. He's been very outspoken about it. So I had to create this system here. We have bubbles made using particular so just to, to, to increase the environment. Basically, particular and the particular is using a sprite and then I gave it layer 64 which is this one which is basically just a bubble and I made different bubbles so we can have different bubbles instead of just the same bubble so as you can see here it's very different from one to another we have black ones we have big blue ones and then we have a very bright small blue ones finally this is the ones that I was looking for these are the bubbles that uh, this is something that Martin really wanted and it looked like it was really good let's go inside what it is basically is just an all rotating and all these are actually scaling on time and then they are offset. So you start from a very big circle like this. This is how I started. All right. And I, he gave me the entire layer. I went and I masked each and every one. It is really important that I'm not duplicating because each and every bubble is different from another. So I couldn't just duplicate it. And then what you do is you just make one scale and the others are just offsetted. That's it. And it's actually this that is doing entire everything. So it's like while they are scaling, this one is making them scale, which makes them come like this, like this 3D effect, like it's coming into the viewer. And in the same time, it is rotating. And I believe this is just a very normal ease and ease. Cool. That's the big bubbles part. Now the teapot. So here in the teapot, you realize there are two teapots. One is the main one. And then you can see one there. And that is because of the effect of something that is shiny coming inside and the water coming towards the camera, it, it will create this effect behind it. And it's like a blurry one. So this is just a complementary effect that I've used. So it's basically the same teapot, but then highly blurred, it doesn't have the effects inside and has it in. So of course, you can see that it has the CC light burst, which is really important like that and the water light effect. So you can see, you see, so it just brings it up. It's turbulent displaced to simulate the water and it's highly fast blur so as you can see so this is how it looks like with a cc light blur normal displacement blur and then of course it is colored so i used an adjustment layer to color literally everything that was down there everything will just get colored into red just using a tint with an adjustment layer great now let's look at the teapot now the teapot is slightly can be argued to be complicated so it's just coming here and it's going to keep rotating for a while and then it will crack we will see how the crack was done. But first, let's look at the war scene. Now, the war scene has been used. It's one of the heaviest scenes. So what I did first was I animated this brush here. All right. So it's a normal brush. And then you can see this here. Hold on. Let me just turn this off. So it's basically just spheres together and then they are offsetted using shape layer offset. And then I do two stacks of turbulent displays. So normally these are the layers turbulent displays one and then turbulent displays two. So you just displace them like water. 
Great. Now I use this as a luma mate for this brush. But as you can see, it's very static. So it didn't really give me that much movement of an actual brush and liquid movement. So what I did was I added another adjustment layer. And this time it has a bunch of effect. One of them is the turbulent displays and then the ripple. Let's look at the turbulent displays. We all know our favorite effect turbulent displays. What it does is it gives you this water effect. Now the ripple on the other hand, what what it does is you see that it just keeps on rippling it's like that water effect so it's just an addition to the turbulent display so it just keeps it like booming all the time instead of just having a turbulent display so this was a combo that I thought was really good to use now the war scene is using that as a luma mat and then it's being put on top of the teapot main basically and it's using the teapot uh, I just literally just when I finished animating this I duplicated it and I used it as an alpha mat so I only see what's inside the teapot great now let's go inside the war scene the war scene is a very simple after effect basic 3d scene creation so you just overlay things together and then the camera will just have to go through all this and things will get animated as the camera passes by basically as you can see so things just start coming up so so far this is what we get. There is a heat generation. So I have a radial blur and in the same time I have a heat distortion. As you can see, the heat is generating music, the video copilot heat distortion. But you can just do that using turbulent noise or displacement map with the custom fractal noise closely. And then when it comes to this guy, the main guy, can I just select you please? So what you can see here, the clay for the main guy, what I did was I had way too many animated his hand using a puppet tool and then we will have this slashes once the hand is animated so as you can see here so these is the slash okay so this is the 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 thing that darkens everything and then we have the slashes here so the slash is just a stroke so I put a mask and then I use the stroke effect, which just reveal original image this and uh, yeah, it has a start and it has an end. That's it. So I color it and uh, I give it a deep glow, which is the thing that's making everything looks good. That's it. That's that's literally it. And then you have more slashes here and also here. So just so that you see what this is, this is a slash. So this is done by uh, Martin. And what I do is I just reveal it using the stroke. And every time there is a slash, I will basically wiggle the screen as I showed you with a wiggler that's it that's how you have this scene now that the scene is done let's look at how the crack was done so that's the crack so what is actually happening here there we go let's go into the teapot main to understand what's happening so this is the teapot what happened was during the crack the thing is gonna go so fast so I have to be very particular about what I want so the first thing that happens in an anime before the crack is you see the pattern because the light is gonna burst out of that. And then, and the pattern is done using, obviously, just shape layers with a trim path, okay? And each shape layer, right? This is the shape layer, as you can see. So let's just focus on this one. It's shape layer with trim path, but then it just looks like a shape layer. So what I do is I add a roughen edge. And when I roughen it and I add deep glow, it looks more organic. And then you have a bunch of them to create a little bit of originality in the, in the crack. And it's not just a very simple, basic crack. So it cracks from a lot of places. And then while it's going, it's going to shatter and slow. Okay. And that some bits of this will fly away like this one here. Now that that is done, if we go back here and we see this crack composition. So what we see here is some bits will start flying. So it's going to be very sudden because it's a crack, you know, so it's like in an instant, this will start flying and then they will slow down. So let's just look at one of them. And if we look at the speed, as you can see, it's very sharp. And then it slows down. So that's what gives me that slow effect. Okay. So again, it's very basic techniques, but when you put them together, it works. And yeah, that's how the crack was done. Boom. That is scene two. Scene three is very, is very straight to the point. You can just watch it and you realize there's only one thing that we can discuss in scene three. So let's just go right into it and end this breakdown. So in the midst of editing this tutorial, I realized that part three, I spoke about some few things 
scenes which the length was like 10 minutes so I didn't want to put it with this part so I will end the video in this part and then we will look at part 3 on the next and the last part thank you so much for watching this please make sure you help me with that like button and thank you all to all my patreons really really from the top of my heart thank you so much and if you want to get the project file you can just join my patreon as well my name is Mr. Popo and we are Popo I'll see you in the next one